uh, evening. Councilwoman, nice of you. Are you How are you? I'm oh, good. So let me uh, acknowledge Councilman Crowley and Councilman Gredenshik and all of the chairs for being here. I thank you. And also let me acknowledge the fact that this is much to everyone being upset about it. Albert Mishabiak's last meeting at the Borough Board, and we wish him well. I already gave him a citation, and I don't got two of me. So, <laughs> but um, to, of course, uh, all the chairs, but especially to Alvin at this moment, you know, we appreciate the work you've done over the last 25 years as chair of the oh, wow. community board that you lead. And we know that in your next endeavor, uh, you will know that you go with our love and our well wishes. Thank you very much. Congratulations on your next step in life. Thank you. I'm going to interpret that for me. Amen. Let's, um, <coughs> no housekeeping. New York City Industrial Developer Fund and Future Works NYC Growth Initiative. Mayor de Blasio recently announced two initiatives to assist both existing local companies and the industrial sector. The NYC Industrial Developer Fund is an initiative to support industrial jobs in New York City. The fund supports job creation by providing public and private financing for industrial real estate development projects. The fund also provides real estate developers with partial public gap <coughs> financing assistance in the form of grants, low interest subordinate loans, and guarantees on senior private loans. The FutureWorks NYC Growth Initiative aims to support the growth of promising companies in NYC. The initiative provides select companies with a better understanding of expected challenges that they might face. <coughs> Tonight we have William Stein of the Strategic Investment of <coughs> in the New York City Economic Development Corporation, who along with his colleagues will give us further details on both initiatives. We welcome you, Mr. Stein. Thank you. And if you recall, if the community board chairs can stay after for a few minutes, I'd appreciate it. All right, so we can talk about some business. Thanks. Hello. 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 You can pop it out. You can pop it out if you want. Hello. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, so again, um, we are New York City Economic Development Corporation, and I'm Jeffrey Lee, head of EDC's Strategic Investments Group. Will Stein's my colleague from Strategic Investments Group. Um, I'm going to defer to him to let him go into a lot of the detail. Um, but just to kick it off, I want to um, give a high level for how this fits in with what EDC is doing, what the city is doing. So we're going to be describing and talking about the Industrial Developer Fund, as well as the Future Works Growth Initiative. The two of those are a couple of pieces of a multi-pronged initiative that are designed to help the city's industrial sector. Um, this follows up on um, a major industrial policy announcement that the mayor made back in November, and that there's several announcement made, uh, announcements made just last week that are germane to this, and in particular, announcing the release uh, and the launch of the Industrial Developer Fund. So we're really excited to be here to talk about it. Um, just stepping back, the industrial sector in New York City is really important. It employs a huge percentage, it's surprising, a huge percentage of the city's workforce. And not only that, but provides um, real opportunities for skill building and career advancement for those that may not necessarily have a college degree. Um, so <clears throat> for those reasons, among others, including the desire for diversifying the city's economy, um, you know, we at EDC think it's pretty important to um, do what we can to work with the industrial sector, support the sector, and uh, try to see it grow. Um, so these two initiatives, the Industrial Developer Fund and the Future Works Growth Initiative, they go about doing that in a couple of different ways, and so we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, so with that being said, I will, I will kick it off. I'll just mention a little bit about the Industrial Developer Fund, and I'll pass it to my colleague, Will, who will, uh, who will go into real detail. Real detail. But, um, our goals of the Industrial Developer Fund. Um, so, back to the policy challenge here. Um, as you may be aware, um, there is a real shortage of affordable industrial space here in New York City. 
um, uh, whether it's an eye disease or otherwise, um, these industrial spaces are constantly being um, challenged in terms of rising real estate prices, real estate speculation, <coughs> rezonings, etc. Lots of challenges that confront industrial companies that are looking for affordable space for them to keep on doing what they're doing and ideally to grow. Um, one of the ways that we want to help there is to not only sort of stem the flow of loss of industrial space, but we want to find ways to get um, you know, third party actors to build and, and renovate and, and bring new industrial space online. So what we're looking to do here is we want to see new industrial real estate development take place throughout New York City. Uh, we've got some <coughs> fairly lofty goals here. Over a four year period, we would like to see 400,000 square feet of new industrial workspace come online. Um, that will support um, up to 1,200 uh, jobs in that space. Um, this is a public-private fund that's uh, total, uh, total funds up to $150 million. And that $150 includes very substantial pieces of, um, of public support in the form of credit enhancements, um, grants, and loans. So that's just a really high level on the Industrial Developer Fund. I'm going to pass over to Will, who will uh, guide you through um, what it really is and how it really works. Thank you. And it's a pleasure to be here today. So on March 3rd, we announced the release of a request for proposals for nonprofit industrial developers. And what these are are nonprofit groups that are seeking to play a traditionally you know, for-profit developer role and develop their own real estate for various tenants, all with the industrial all within the industrial sector. And what we've, we're providing to them is a combination of, of grants, uh, grants, oh sorry, I'm oh sorry, city, in the form of city capital from the mayor uh, discretionary funds, low interest subordinate loans, funds directly from EDC, and a credit enhancement where EDC will uh, provide a, a guarantee directly to a bank on a real estate project. Stepping back just a minute, the ideal project will be to you know support nonprofits that are going to acquire, construct, or do major renovation, um, as Jeff mentioned, to bring new real estate online. We're looking at catalytic, impactful projects with a minimum of 25,000 square feet, and the geography is open to you know industrial areas of, of New York City's five boroughs. So those are these are the three tools that are at our disposal. And what we've done is released an RFP that will uh, be open for the next year. So and there'll be quarterly submission deadlines. Our first submission deadline is fast approaching uh, at the end of, end of this month. And we have an info session tomorrow where we will hopefully receive and, and be able to answer uh, questions from nonprofit developers who are interested in, in sort of exploring this, this opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Um, Councilman? Well, what is considered industry? Uh, would something like uh, film production work? Great, great question. Um, so, uh, thank you. As I alluded to before, um, I guess, first of all, we want to take a very broad approach when we're thinking about potential projects here. So, we are open to all kinds of suggestions and responses. Um, uh, one thing that we are focusing on is that, you know, one of the reasons why the industrial sector is so valuable and important is that it creates opportunities for a living wage job and a living wage career for those that might not have much formal education. Um, so a lot of the focus here is going to be on projects that create a lot of those kinds of jobs where, let's say, maybe someone has a GED or got their associate's degree and, um, and then can move into a skill building sort of opportunity um, making, you know, $15 an hour um, and move up to become, you know, the sort of plant manager or sort of shop floor manager at $30 an hour, something that um, starts to, you know, be uh, uh, a, a very supportable um, wage um, and can, you know, really provide for a family. Um, as opposed to non-industrial paths like retail that for so 